All right, let's keep moving forward and let's go and detail out the different peels on our pumpkin. All right, so let's jump back into Houdini. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to come in here and work on each individual peel, at least as I'm calling them, uh, on our pumpkin over here, okay? And so we have our loops set up from the last lecture over here where we can go and cycle through each of these individual peels here. All right, what I want to do is I want to drop down a add node, all right, because I need to get all these horizontal lines extracted from this particular mesh, and this add node will help us do that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up that add node and hit delete geometry, but keep the points. So I still have all my points around. Super cool. And we can come in here into the polygons tab and hit the by group. And what this will do is it'll allow us to start to connect the points together based off of a pattern. All right, just like how our group by range used a point numbering range to create a pattern to group the prims into. We can do the same with this add node. So what I'm going to do is set this to skip every nth point. All right, so we're going to skip every so many points. And what I need to do here is I need to get the number of points from our profile, just like we did in that group range. So we could actually just come up to our group by range node. And actually, let's just select the end points function without the minus one. And we will go and put this into the n parameter here. All right, and hit enter. And look at that. And that's because we're skipping every other point, basically, in our profile. All right, so we have 18. And so it's going all the way up and then coming over down to the other side and connecting the two horizontal points that match. How cool is that? So with that, what we can do is we can come in here and drop down a carve node because I'm looking to put a couple points in the middle here. I need, and I need that offset. Uh, to be equal on both sides here. So if I were to put in this carve node currently into this add node, you can see I can pull off, you know, one side of the curves there. And I can pull off the other side. Well, I need both of these to be basically an equal offset. So to do that, I can right click on this guy, say copy parameter, and I'm going to paste that relative reference in there. And then I'm going to put a one minus because we really just want to take one and we want to subtract this value, which will give us the exact value on the other side of the curve. All right, so in this case, we get 0.71. So now we have an equal offset on both sides. Cool. And for this to work, I need to also check keep outside because I want to put these little points right here. And I'm going to lift these guys up. And in order to lift those guys up, I need to basically peak them with something like the peak node. Okay. And this peak node works off of normals. So it kind of displaces it or it doesn't kind of displace it. It does displace it based off of the normal direction. And currently, if I turn on my normal display, I don't have any normals on here. All right, so let's backtrack a little bit here. This is what I always do inside of my graphs. I backtrack to find the point at which I lost my normals. So I come up here, and I still have normals. Look at that. And by the time I get to the add node, that's where I lose my normals. So at some point in between these collection of nodes right here, we need to do our normals. So I'm actually going to put it up in outside above this guy up here. So I'm going to put in a normal node here. Okay, and the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to set this to points, just like that. So for every single one of these guys, I get normals. All right, and you can see that they're still green, and that just means that they're vertex normals. And currently, I actually set them to point normals, so that means I need to hit this little guy right here. So that way the for loop actually updates the geometry. Cool. So now we have our normals. So let's go see if we lose all that. So I'm going to hit this add node. It looks like we're keeping our normals nicely. And then the carve node looks good. Awesome. And so when we come down to the peak node, we still have our normals too, unless the recompute point normal checkbox is on. All right. So I'm going to leave that off for now. All right. And what I need to do for each one of these guys, I need to somehow group these two inner points here. We also need to join these points because currently you can see, it's actually kind of hard to see on video, but they're overlapping points here. You can tell by the, the point numbers. There's a number underneath that 40, I swear. <laughs> All right, so um, I need to go and join these guys together. So to do that, 
usually we drop down a fuse node. I'm going to get my fuse node here. All right, so I'm going to fuse the points together first. That looks pretty good. And we got our normals blasted away, so I don't want to recompute any of those normals there. Very cool. And it looks like we're pretty good now. All right. So what I want to do now is I want to go and group just these inner guys on each one of these particular curves over here. And so to do that, what I can do is drop down a group node and let's feed that guy in there. We'll call these the inner points like so. All right. And I'm going to say we're going to actually put this onto points for the group type. All right. Because we're selecting points and I'm going to hit enable. And let's do unshared edges. And currently they all select. And that's not going to work for us. So we're probably going to have to do some sort of group by range then. All right, so let's do something like that. Okay, so I'm going to drop down that group by range node. And let's wire this into or after the fuse node there. And I need to set this to work on points. All right, let's name this our inner points here. And so what I want to do is I want to select two out of every four of these points. All right, so that's the pattern. So for each one of these primitives here, all right, we actually still have a whole primitive there. And we should probably take care of that really quickly. Sorry about that, I'm getting off topic. Let's do a, a join like so. And by default, it's gonna to try to blend it. And we can come down and say only connected. And let's check our primnums. So there we go. So now we have a primitive per horizontal curve there. Awesome. That is what I'm talking about. And we still have UVs for all this stuff. Super cool. So let's pump that back into that group range and get back on topic here. So let's go over here to the group by range node. And so again, I want to select two out of every four of these points. So if I put in two for here, so I want to select two points out of every four. You can see that it selects two points out of every four, but it's doing it over here. So we need to offset that by one. Well, there we go. Look at that. Super awesome. So let's get rid of this other group node there. And with that, now I can pump that into this peak node here. And for the point group, we can give it those inner points and I can go and create a profile. How's that for proceduralism? Very cool. So at this point, I want to make this a little bit more round, too. And that's where our resample node comes into play. So let me turn off cap box there. And so I want to drop down a resample. There we go. All right, cool. So we're resampling it. And we can even go a little smaller with this guy. Or better yet, let's do a maximum segments. That way I can control it. Much better for game development and set it to subdivision curves. And we now have a way to create a nice smooth peak offset there for our pumpkin. How cool is that? And we still have all UVs in place. So let's go drop down another skin node over here. Turn that back into geometry. And voila, look at that. Let's pump that into our for each end and turn off our single pass and we have a pumpkin and we need some normals too so let's drop down another normal node and there we go pretty cool so you can go and take care of the little top parts up here i might do that uh here pretty soon just need some sort of gradient value to multiply the the peak offset but that is that that is basically how to create a really basic pumpkin so I'm going to close out the lecture there, and in the next lecture, we're going to add some colors to this and maybe put a little top in there. Yeah, we're going to do a bunch of stuff. I also want to get to putting on the face, but we'll do that in the next section and then make the little candle that sits inside here. So thanks so much, guys. We'll see you guys in the next lecture.